In this video, you're gonna learn how to multi-camera edit in Resolve. This is gonna be a two-part video series. For this first video, we're gonna look at the A10 Mini Pro and Extreme. For this exercise, we're gonna use my last video, the A10 Mini Pro rig, and I'm gonna look at that project file and show you how I brought in all of that media. Now, on a very basic level, when you record to an A10 ISO, Blackmagic will actually create a project file for you that you can open up in DaVinci. I don't actually want to use this project file, but I'll show you what we've got and why I don't want to use it. This is what one of the project files looks like that comes directly out of the ISO recording. Whatever was in program, the ISO version of that is being put into the timeline. So these gaps in the middle here is when I stopped the recording, went to fix something, and then came back and started again. Now, because I was using the ATEM more as like a multi-track recorder, rather than a live streaming device, I wasn't switching as I was going because I was presenting to camera and I was demonstrating things. So all this is put in the timeline is whatever was on program. And this happens to be camera one, which was an overhead view. The problem with these clips is they're just clips. They're not multi-camera clips. So I can't click on this and choose a different angle. So one of the main things I'm gonna to show to you today is how to create this multi-camera clip itself. And we're gonna bring all of that in together into one clip so that we have a master clip that we can work from. And if we ever want to switch angles to somewhere else, we'll be able to do that without having to go back to the source bin and finding a clip and bringing it in in sync. It's really important that you back up all of your media. I travel a bit internationally when it's not a pandemic. And so I've taken to using Western Digital My Passport drives which are now in five terabytes and I'll have a main drive and then a B drive and I use carbon copy cloner to automatically back those up when they are connected. And then I'll use Backblaze to create an additional backup on the web. And that just gives me my data in three points so that if there's a mechanical failure with a hard drive or get it lost or stolen, then I also have the cloud backup as well. Now that they've been backed up, I've consolidated them onto this solid state drive here because that's faster. I used to use RAID drives and I still do for some projects where I need like many terabytes. But for this project, it was under a terabyte and this is a two terabyte flash drive. So I've got plenty of room to move there. I always organize my projects by the date. So I use the date backwards, 210407. It was like the day that this project was shot. And then I use like a project name and then I'll have original for all of the media. And at this top level, this is where I would bring in other name items like masters or edits as I go along. But to start with, we're gonna to go to original and I've already brought in my media here. I'm listing them by sources. So I had a 5D Mark IV, I had two ATEMs you'll see in the subfolders, and then I had a C200. And within these extreme and the pro, there's multiple recordings here because I've stopped and started. And then you'll see within each project file, sometimes there's also multiple stops and starts. So I've got a whole lot of media here that I need to organize to be able to make sense of that and to pull it into an edit. Let's take a look at all the different camera sources that I used to create that video. And then you can understand the different layers that we're gonna to have to build up in this multi-camera edit. So on the ATEM Mini Pro, I was recording four channels. On input one, I had the 5D Mark IV that I was hand holding. I had a wireless signal coming from the C200, which is what this is being recorded on as well, feeding into the rig via a Teradek. On input three, I had a Raspberry Pi desktop view. And then on four, I had the return of the multi view. So that was the whole point of that tutorial to show that we could record or stream four channels um, wirelessly using battery but I also needed a few more camera angles. So I was also running an extreme. I had an overhead shot that I wanted to capture the table. And then of course, when I moved on to pulling apart the rig and disassembling it on the bench, the A10 Mini Pro wasn't plugged in. So all of my sources were then routed into the A10 Mini Extreme. Additionally to that, I also had some handheld B-roll that I shot on the 5D Mark IV. So these are just a bunch of files here that I'll bring in. And then the C200, I was recording that in conjunction with what was being fed into the ATEM. Usually I would just use the C200 to feed out of the camera into the ATEM, and then I would just use an HD copy depending on what I'm making. But for this one, I wanted to be able to punch in and so I needed the 4K. So that means that we now have three cards here that are UHD footage and they're gonna have a different time code. That's gonna be the main thing here. I'm gonna go shift two to jump over to my media pool. And then in my finder, because I've already laid this out in the finder, 
I'm just going to drag this into this column on the side so that it retains my folder structure just so that I know where everything is. Now that we're in the media pool, we're going to organize our camera's metadata to create one multi-camera clip of all the camera content. Now I'm going to start with the ATEM Mini Extreme just because there's the most number of tracks, even though most of those tracks are black. If I expand this folder here, you'll see I can select the Extreme. And then if I just select the next folder below it, it's actually selected everything within the Extreme folder. I could go down and select this whole thing, but it's going to give me the same results on this side. I don't have to worry about these web files because all of the audio was recorded through the mic input and it's directly on the program of the ATEM itself. So in this instance, there's no audio files to sync. So I'm going to go over to my metadata tab, turn that on. And then I want to look at my shot and scene and I'm going to scroll down to camera number. I'm also going to turn that on. If I right click on this bar here, I can turn on camera number here. So now this column, I can sort by the camera number. By default, the ATEM ISO creates the program as camera number zero. I don't actually like it being zero. It's much easier to cut on the keyboard if it's at the end. So for the ATEM Mini Extreme, there's eight inputs and I would call the program input nine. So I've selected the program inputs and instead of zero, I'm going to go over to my metadata over here and say nine, save. And now these have jumped down the bottom here and they are all labeled as input nine. All right, so now I can close that. I'm going to go to my pro folder. Normally if I was just working with an ATEM Mini Pro where I've got inputs one to four as cameras one to four and then the program I would rename from zero to number five. It just makes it very easy to cut. And then on my Stream Deck over here, I have a multi-camera folder here. So I can actually just cut these camera angles as I'm going once I've created this multi-camera clip. But in this instance, because we're merging an ATEM Extreme with an ATEM Pro, we're going to give them all different camera numbers so that they show up on different tracks. So I'm going to start with number one. And we had nine before, so I'm going to call this one 10. Save that. Select input two, and we're going to call that 11. Input three, call that 12. Input four, call that 13. And then for the program, input zero, input 14. All right, so now all of these files have the same time code and they have different camera numbers, which is going to make them much easier to sync. I'm also going to go to my C200 and select that. And you'll see there's no camera number here. It's not a black magic file. It doesn't have as much metadata in that regard. And so I'm just going to select all of the C200 files and I'm going to call it camera 15, just so it's different, even though I will sync it separately. So now we can go back to the ATEM. I'm going to select the pro and the extreme. That's brought up all of the files that we have. We don't need to worry about the wave files. Let's scroll down and we've got our cameras through to 14. All right, so I'm going to select 14 and then I'll scroll back up to get to one. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go up to create new multicam clip using selected clips. I'm going to rename this ATAM underscore MC. The frame rate is going to be 23976 because that's what it was recorded in. The angle of sync is going to be time code. And then the angle name is going to be camera because we've set that camera number. And I want to detect clips from the same camera and we're going to be using the metadata camera number that we set. I'm going to deselect move source clips to original clips bin. I just like keeping things where they were, but if you wanted to go through a whole bunch of different logging, then that's one way to just kind of organize your clips and move them into a different bin. I'm going to go create and it's very quick. It's Dumped it, there it is. And I'm going to drag it out into my master just so I can find it. So the next thing is the C200. I'm going to select that. And I'm actually going to make a multi-camera clip. This is a multi-camera clip where there's one angle. And the point is not that we need to cut between angles, but that um, by putting it into a multi-cam clip, it's going to actually lay it out in sync. So I'm going to select all files. And we're also going to make a new multi-cam clip, C200 4K MC. And the settings should be the same as before, 23976, we're using time code, camera number. We're detecting clips from the same camera. That's the main thing we want to do here. And we're using the camera number and we're going to create that. 
So now that has put a, another multi-camera clip and I'm going to move that into my master folder just so I see where that is. Now I can right click and go open in timeline and this will swing me over into the editor. All of these individual recordings have now been laid out in a timeline which is in sync. So I can copy all of those clips, move them over to my ATEM timeline and only have to sync the beginning once and then all of those other clips should remain in sync. The ATEM MC we're going to open in timeline. Now at this stage, it's handy to have a dual screen just because we're working with so many tracks. So I'm going to workspace, dual screen, turn on. And I'm going back to workspace, dual screen, full screen timeline. It's also handy to go up to this top corner and turn on stacked timelines. And that just creates a tab here where I can see the open timelines that I've got. So if I scroll across my timeline, I can see that these files were the ATEM Mini Pro that was recording at the beginning. And then when I moved over to doing the teardown, that was not recording. So there's no files there. And then these files up the end is actually because I started recording the video the night before at quarter past five. And so in terms of this timeline, it's looking at this as a single day. This is actually spread across two days. So what I need to do to make this chronological is to grab this bit, which was the night before and move that to the head of the clip. So I'm going to hit command A to select all of the tracks. And I'm going to move these down the timeline to make some space for my evening shoot. That evening file, I'm going to drag it back to the head of the timeline. So now all of my recordings are in chronological order. Come up to the top here, add an angle. And this is going to be the C200 that we bring in here on the video track. And also down the bottom, there's audio is angle 15. Now I'm going to go to the auto track selector and I'm going to go shift click. And that's going to deselect everything except for 15. Make sure that the audio is also selected. And then I'm going to target angle 15. And I'm going to target video angle 15 as well. Come back to my C200 timeline, select all, copy. And if I go back to my ATEM timeline and I'm basically hitting paste and that's dumped that in. Now this is out of sync to the ATEM, but it's in sync with itself. So with my C200, I can just select this track and slide it across. And you'll see that, there we go. That's pretty much in sync. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do an actual sync using the waveforms manually. If I scroll to the bottom here, we can see angle 15 is the C200 uh, and then A14 camera nine. This is one of the audio tracks that was on the extreme. And I know that this is the program audio. So I'm just going through and I'm looking for some similarities. And I can see here already that these are going to line up here. So just zooming out again, I've got all of my C200 selected so that as I move this clip, everything else is being moved in line with it. So I don't have to go through each of these clips and line them up. These will be done once or twice actually, because I got the day break. With that selected, I'm just going shift and bouncing across, keep going across, holding down shift jumps at 10 frames. And I go a little bit too far, release shift, and then I go back, zoom right in, and we're looking pretty good. So now I have a multi-camera clip with 15 angles in it. Some of those are black, so we want to get rid of those. And I want to arrange these in a way that's going to make sense to me. So when I cut to it, I can name the labels and I know what I'm cutting to. We'll start with the easy ones, which is that a lot of these extreme angles are black because there was nothing being used on them. So for example, camera eight, I can just delete the angle. This is also deleting the audio associated with it. A six, five, four. That's all of the blank tracks, basically. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of my timeline and start arranging these cameras. These five tracks are actually the A10 Mini Pro. I'm going to start with that. So I'm just moving the extreme camera back into place. So now I have 5D4. I have a C200, a Pi, a Multiview. This is the ATEM Mini Pro's program output. My overhead shot was an iPhone, another C200 angle, a 5D Mark III, the EXT program. Angle 15 is the C200 in 4K. All right, so we're pretty organized here now. The main thing I'm gonna do here is hit Y and I'm just gonna move some of these up. It's all starting to get out of sync anyway. So there's not really any point to maintain 
its true timecode sync, make it a, a smaller clip to work with. We can actually close this timeline down, the multi-camera timeline. And if we go back to it in my bin over here, right click and just go create new timeline using selected clips based on project settings, which you'll see here is 1920 by 1080, same frame rate. Excellent. Create. And now we've got something that looks really basic. One clip in a timeline. But if I go over to my multi view and go multicam as my feet, some people love my feet. It's going to bring up all of these different angles. Now I'm running a MacBook Pro from 2017. It's not the latest and greatest. It's not going to be running 16 tracks of this. So this is where from a performance point of view, I would go to timeline and just put on quarter resolution. We just want this system to be able to play back quickly. Now that we have our multi-camera clip in our timeline, we're ready to start editing. I do this in two phases. The first one is a trim. So I'm basically setting it to a wide shot and going through and just cutting out all the dead space, reducing that down as much as possible. And then the second pass is going to be where I go through and actually cut the angles. So a little bit of file management before we get started. We're going to step through a whole number of phases as we go through this edit. The first one is normally sync, something we've already done with the multi-camera clips. Next, we're going to do a selects. Uh, we do a rough cut, first cut, second cut, final cut, um, grade, mix, and then a final master. And I want to be able to go back to each of those in case I want to pull something because as I'm editing and go forward, I want to get rid of as many clips as possible because they get in the way and I want to have a clean timeline. But if you have a client and you need to refer back to a certain edit, I need to know when I got to that certain date. So again, I use the same sort of file naming system, which is 210621 ATEM tutorial. This phase is going to be sync is normally what I would do. So to set that up, the first thing I'm going to do is go option and drag this clip down here. What I'm doing here is creating a separate audio track, which in this case, if I go right click here, I can choose extreme program. I just want to keep that as the master audio. So I'm going to go right click here, switch multicam angle to and go C200 because that was my wide angle. This is still slowly building the waveform in the background, but I'm going to power ahead using that by hitting D. And I'm just going to be working with the master audio on audio two. Let's call that master. So then we can bring in the speed editor. The speed editor is something that I would like to love a lot more than I do. I, I love the jog wheel and the in and out and the space bar and the ripple delete. I think that's, and maybe jog and scroll. That's probably what I use. The speed editor is great for trimming. This makes it very easy to go back and forth and find a spot. The goal of this is to try and keep your hands off the keyboard as much as possible. So what we have here is under timeline, we have audio scrubbing turned on. And that means that as I go back and forth, I can hear what's happening there. Now, I really like using ripple delete because it just sort of brings all the timeline in and collapses it as it goes. On my stream deck, I have programmed a ripple delete. It's got two actions, deselect everything, and then to do a ripple delete, because if you just hit ripple delete, but you've got a clip selected, then it deletes the clip. Whereas I like working with an in and out and I just delete that portion of the timeline. So I'm just gonna undo that. Lastly, I'm gonna do a tear down for you so that you can see all of the parts that go into making this, because you may wanna make something like it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. So take from this what you will, and maybe <clears throat> you want to make a version of this. So in here, there's a problem. Take, take from this what you will, and maybe you want to make a version of this. And that's where I'm just going to hit ripple delete on the stream deck, because I know I don't have any selected in this instance. And so when I play back, pieces in there. So take from this what you will, and maybe you want to make a version of this for yourself. Excellent. All right. It's just trying to keep my fingers in the one spot. So rather than being on the keyboard, I can be on the speed editor and on the Stream Deck, I've built a profile there. They're really simple things too. It's like zooming in and out, just because I want to be able to like see where I'm cutting, um, or the zoom button to go fully out or fully in. And then down the bottom, I've got actual like uh, camera cutting buttons. So if I was doing a true multi-camera cut where I'm actually looking at all of the files live, then I could cut that way. But in this instance, I've got too many files going. So it's just tidying it up and making it more listenable so that you guys don't tune out. <laughs> and just leave me rattling on for hours and hours and hours. 
So once I've made a pass and cut out all of the dead spots and the ums and the ahs and just like any repeats or that kind of stuff, I've now got a solid audio file with a lot of jump cuts in it and I've got to go back and recut the clips so that there's no jump cuts and it makes a lot more sense and there's a flow to the visual story of demonstrating if something looks better from above or from the side. There's a couple of ways of cutting here. If you want to do a live multi-camera cut, if you come down here to multi-cam, turn that on, and this is actually going to live switch. Now you can use the keyboard numbers up here for each input, or I've actually mapped that on a stream deck, which is just the same, one, two, three, four, five, that kind of thing. So um, as I'm hitting play, I can hit three, four, five, six, whatever I needed to in terms of being able to lay down cuts. Now, the performance was struggling there, so that's not what I've done with this. The other way to do it, which doesn't involve so much system resources, is to turn off multicam, just go back to source, and then that's not live syncing all of those tracks as you play through. And you can see my, my frame rate playback is a lot better here. Um, so just say I want to do a cut when I sit down. I can actually hit C. Oh, or maybe not, I'll select the clip and hit C. And then on my new clip, hit F, I'll update the source viewer. And then I can see I wanna hit camera eight as I sit down into the shot here. Okay, let's close down this rough cut and we're gonna go back to our timelines here. So after the rough cut, I did a first cut over a couple of days, had a bit of a break there. And then by my first cut, you can see I've added in some music. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn all of these parts into a rig. And I'm also starting to drop in some text set up. So just to get a feel of where the labels and stuff are gonna go. So I do the first and a second cut, fine cut. Final cut is like when everything's locked and you're gonna start doing sound and color. And so there's no more edit changes at that point. By the time I get to the final cut, I've got 36 minutes of video. And at this point I'm like, this is really two videos. There is the first part, which is kind of show and tell. And then the second part of this is really the nuts and bolts of the electronics and stuff. And that's probably not as interesting to most people, um, a little more detailed. And so I thought for YouTube, I'm gonna break this into two. Um, and you can see by the performance results, like the first video, maybe because it has music and that kind of stuff, um, did very well. And then the second one has a lot less viewers, like, like 10 times less the views, but hopefully helpful information for those who need it. To finish off, I'm gonna show you now how to do the color grade section of this. I'm not gonna go into huge detail, but similar to the multi-camera syncing, we're gonna use that sort of principle to make our color grade easier. I've got 36 minutes of footage. It's something that's on YouTube. It's not a masterpiece, short film, music video, that kind of stuff. It's something that needs to look good, but I don't wanna spend a huge amount of time color grading it. I'm just gonna right click, go find in media pool. Now remember, this is our multi-camera clip that we created at the beginning and I'm going to go open in timeline so we can go in and have a look at it. I'm just gonna close my other one down. Um, this is slightly different to the one I showed you because this is the original one that I made. Um, I just, the other one was built for the demonstration purposes. The lighting is consistent and I don't have that much variation. If I was outdoors, that would be probably a different story. I'm just gonna hit shift six. It's gonna bring me into the color grading. This is already color graded. In my stream deck, I've got a color grading panel that I created here so I can turn off the node and turn it back on. Luma correction, a um, little bit of white balance correction. I'm working on the top track here. And so what I'm gonna do is as I go through, I just color grade each clip. So just say I've done the C200 4K footage, can turn off the C200 4K footage. And then it's showing me the next line down on V8 and I can mute that, show you the before and after in the color grade that I've done. It's really simple, just sort of a bit of color correction, maybe raising the gamma a bit, crushing the lift a bit, and just sort of work my way through. And I do that for all of these clips, keep turning off each track as we go. Again, C200, I would be copying those clips across. And then an overhead shot, which was this um, iPhone up here and a bit yellowy, so I'm trying to get rid of that. Copy that grade forward. So once I've done all of the color grading to these clips within the multicam, I can go back to my ATEM rig. I've got to make sure I've turned all these tracks back on, otherwise it'll disable the angles. I'm going to close that down and go to my sequences. Let's go to the final edit. And so now when we look at our timeline, we're looking at clips that have been graded in their multi-camera form. 
And so if I went into the color editor now, if I mute my node, then it's not actually having any effect on the color. And that's because the color grade is already done on the multicam clip. So now anything I do here would be additional to that base grade. All right, so that's a quick look at how you would batch grade a multicam edit. A couple more things as we finish off. The first is putting in visual effects. So you've done your grade and you want to add in some motion. In this video, I'm just a little bit of a zoom, all of these parts digital zoom to just create interest and a bit more movement than a static camera because I'm filming this on my own. These are all on tripods. Essentially what it is under this Dropbox here, putting in a keyframe. So I'm hitting my, my zoom position, my X, Y position, and then going to the end, adjusting it a bit, and then I'll have a, a zoom that's created. I'm show you how to turn all. And then the other thing that I did a lot of in this video was because I had the 4K here, I actually wanted to crop in on that, maybe to cut my feet out. Under my inspector, I just go to my zoom in a bit. So we get rid of this backdrop edge, and then I go up, find that frame. So then I'm gonna select my clip and go copy, and over to my new clip. And I'm gonna paste attributes by doing option V, which will bring up this box. And I wanna select that I want to change the position and the zoom and apply. By doing that, you can just copy your attributes across a whole load of clips. And then to speed up that workflow, I've built those shortcut keys into the Stream Deck under a copy and paste attributes. So I can copy the first clip. I can go to the second one, select and paste attributes. Under Stream Deck, it's a two-step action where I've gone a hot key, which is option V to paste attributes, which brings up that dialog box and then return to execute that. And that just makes it faster as I work my way down the timeline and I find similar clips, I can just hit paste attributes and it brings that into the framing that I want for that. So that was a look at how to do a multi-camera edit using timecode. This will work for the ATEM minis, but this also works for other cameras that use timecode sync. If you have any questions, leave a note in the comments. And if there's any other videos that you would like to see made on this channel, please let me know what topics I should be covering. But stick around because in the next video, I'm gonna show you a jazz band music video edit that I did using two cameras and five takes. All of the camera angles are out of sync as well as all the performances are out of sync. So I'm gonna show you how to bring all of those angles into sync and to tame that multi-camera edit.